I think we should take a drug test prior to the debate. I do. I think we should. Why don't we do that? We should take a drug test prior, because I don't know what's going on with her. But at the beginning of her last debate, she was all pumped up at the beginning. And at the end, it was like, oh, take me down. Donald Trump suggesting he and Hillary Clinton take a drug test prior to tomorrow night's third presidential debate. He made the suggestion in New Hampshire at a rally over the weekend. Now, Mr. Trump has spoken out repeatedly on Mrs. Clinton's health. It's been a major part of his campaign. But presidential press secretary Josh Earnest got involved in this debate uh, yesterday at his daily press briefing. Take a listen to his response to Mr. Trump's comment. So you're telling me that the candidate who snorted his way through the first two debates is accusing the other candidate of taking drugs? It's a curious development in the campaign. Mm -hmm. Josh Earnest, comic. Clever guy, huh? Let's continue our conversation now with our political panel via Skype from New York City. We welcome back columnist and political commentator Liz Peake and from Newsmax New York political advisor Sam Nunberg. Sam worked for the Trump team earlier in this campaign. Thanks to you both for sticking around with us here on Newsmax Prime. Liz, to look at Josh Ernest's face and uh, the remark he offered right there, I'm reminded of the WikiLeaks leaks talking about how much of this press corps is in the tank for Hillary. He was playing to a friendly crowd. Oh, and I think they're getting incredibly bumptious. They feel like this campaign is over, the election is won, and Hillary Clinton's going to be the next president. So increasingly, they're derisive of Donald Trump, uh, of people who support him. And, you know, this was sort of a, this was a sort of uh, oddball thing for Donald Trump to talk about, for sure. And we all remember that during uh, the debate, he was sniffing a good deal. I'm not sure he was snorting, but he was sniffing. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, Josh Ernest was sort of pretending to suggest, I suppose, that uh, Donald Trump may have been snorting cocaine. I don't know. But, um, you know, I mean, again, yes, I think the press corps is totally friendly to uh, Hillary Clinton and the Obama White House, uh, which is the only possible explanation, frankly, for the fact that this uh, campaign seems to be going in her favor, because with the evidence that's come out against her, sensible voters should know better. Well, Sam, Josh Ernest, his very name means to joke about sincerity, which makes it dubious to have him as <laughs> press secretary. But besides that, look at the double standard. Uh, what he had right. to say about Mr. Trump would be a serious allegation. And uh, I got to tell you, maybe I, I'm just one of these guys who, uh, who was in Mr. Trump's wheelhouse, but I thought that that uh, suggestion for a drug test was, was a great idea. Well, first of all, you know, the only president I know that's admitted to doing cocaine is Barack Obama. And the fact of the matter is the only reason we have to talk about drugs and this and that and health is because Hillary Clinton hasn't been honest about her health. I mean, even in that episode, that unfortunate episode, by the way, at 9-11, she, remember, her team originally lied and said that it was not a big deal. She was just had a little heat stroke. And then we saw that she, she you know, at the very least fainted into that car. And, uh, you know, I do think and I do believe, as others have reported, such as Ed Klein, that her health is a major issue. And, and the amount of documents that she's released, I mean, granted, she's released almost, you know, some more than Donald Trump, but she hasn't been very, uh, once again, she hasn't been very uh, open about this at all. And I do think, by the way, it's a legitimate issue about her health. Well, you mentioned Barack Obama and at a joint press conference earlier today with Italian Premier Renzi, Donald Trump was still on the mind of President Obama, even though Mr. Obama came out and he said he wasn't going to talk about the campaign. Huh, he just can't help himself. Here's the president on, oh, on uh, Mr. Trump's claims of vote rigging. He start whining before the game's even over. If, 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 if whenever things are going badly for you and, and you lose, you start blaming somebody else then you don't have what it takes to be in this job. I'd advise Mr. Trump to stop whining and go try to make his case to get votes. Now, Liz, that's a little rich. I mean, it's great. He delivered that line like he was the Marlboro <laughs> Man or something. But hey, no. for a guy who comes out of Cook County, Illinois, with what we know that goes on there in terms of votes coming from the cemetery, I'm sorry. That's just a little much. Well, it's also quite 
much to have Barack Obama talk about how it's not really very presidential to blame others for things going wrong. We've had seven years of Obama blaming the GOP for not letting him accomplish all the marvelous things that he set out to accomplish, including uniting the nation. So honestly, this was a dig that was, I thought, beyond the pale, honestly. Uh, you know, but that's Obama, right? I mean, he drops his G's when he's in front of a friendly audience. And when he's, you know, trying to talk to sort of middle, middle Americans, even though he went to Ivy League schools and he knows perfectly well that those words have G's on the end. It's a complete affectation. J.D., the one thing I would say, though, about Donald Trump talking about the election being rigged is he should be somewhat cautious in the fact that, you know, this is a base turnout election. And what you don't want is for him, for a lot of our, uh, our voters or for Republican voters to think that they don't have a chance to win the election on Election Day and not want to wait in those long lines. Uh, on the other hand, you know, we do know that when elections are rigged, they're rigged for their side, for the Democrat side. I don't know how much election fraud occurs in this country, but I can tell you that the, that the vast majority of those votes are going to the Democrats. And it was the Obama administration or the IRS on their own that decided to prosecute Tea Party. Uh, Tea Party groups and didn't let them organize properly for the tw for the 2012 election. So this whole idea that the election isn't rigged, is, it, you know, that there aren't these forces against them, it's ju it's just not true. But on the other hand, we, I I do think it could be somewhat problematic for voter turnout, and he should be a little cautious about it. Well, you talk about voter turnout and candidates down ballot. Uh, may be in a tough position when it comes to Mr. Trump's claims. For example, former GOP presidential candidate Senator Marco Rubio debating to try and keep his Senate seat in Florida last night. He stepped away from Mr. Trump's argument. Uh, here's the way Senator Rubio put it. We have 67 counties in this state, each of which conduct their own elections. I promise you there is not a 67 county conspiracy to rig this election. Second, the governor of the state of Florida is a Republican who appoints the people that run the division of elections. Third, th there is, there's no evidence behind any of this. And so this should not continue to be said. And do I believe people should have confidence? Yes. All right, now I gotta be fair about this. As a relatively new Florida voter, Liz, I can tell you that after 2000, both parties were reasonably honest brokers and the ballot security in this state is exceptional. But you take a look at other places where the Democrats have made a case that showing ID is somehow discriminatory. Liz, by that standard, we would brand all of the, uh, of the airlines racist and uh, the transportation security authority is racist for asking for photo ID. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. It seems to me having to present an ID to vote is perfectly acceptable. But I think what Trump is talking about is not just maybe some of the voter uh, applications being given out too freely or there being very little oversight about who actually registered to vote. I think he's also talking about the incredible cohesion amongst the media, for example, in trying to persuade voters uh, to get out and vote and to persuade them that he is a dangerous candidate, et cetera. To me, uh, I think that is more of an issue here than, it, and, than ballot box stuffing and the kinds of things that have gone on, for sure. I mean, we know that that's true. We know it's happened in various places. I don't think that's going to be cause for alarm across the nation in terms of the outcome of this election. I agree. Uh, I don't, it was Sam, I don't think that Trump should continue that. Well, Sam, uh, we've only well, got about a minute left mm -hmm. here. I, I just got to ask you. And as a question I had mm -hmm. for Pete Hoekstra, who supported John Kasich earlier, there's Ohio. And the Ohio GOP has pulled the help for Donald Trump. Now, how on earth can they expect to have any type of party cohesion? Isn't that such a, 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 an event that is so disruptive that it makes it increasingly difficult for the future of the party, much less what happens in three weeks? We've got about 30 seconds. Yeah, I, it, it certainly does. And I do know that for a fact that the Ohio GOP was not coordinating or cooperating with the Trump campaign there. On the other hand, you know, Donald Trump is our party leader and he has to, the onus is somewhat on him. And sometimes his own conduct is problematic enough that it gives them the excuse. And all, that's all they need, J.D., as you well know. I mean, you're very conservative and you were an activist and a Tea Party-esque activist. But, you know, that's all the leadership needs here and the, and the uh, Republican Party leadership to... Uh, to uh, not cooperate with him, but 
I do think that at, at the end of the day, if the results do not go well in this election, we do need to have a, a self identity you know, self identity. Uh, well, the one look, thing look that's going to happen the is th that establishment bunch of mod squatters is going to have a lot to answer for. Liz, Sam, yeah. I thank you very, very much. There is more ahead. We'll talk to Dan Stein about what's going on with illegals right after this.